Yeah. We have yeah, we that's have what it is. Four hundred and sixteen lords. We found it. We notes. found it. They stuffed the fucking ballot box. Earlier in the Duncan Egg novellas, actually, Sir Eustace might still be alive to vote in the next one we're going to talk about. Hello, everybody. Hello. <laughs> Hello. The last recording was a disaster, and it well, was hey, my fault. We're, uh, are we live? Oh, we are. Oh, we're, we're live. live. Oh, we're recording. There's no recording in the top of the screen that I can see. We're, we're Hi, going. everybody. We're trying something new. If you yeah. like it, tell us. If you don't like it, also tell us. No, if you don't like it, don't tell us. No, do tell us because it's actually considerably more effort. So if you really hate it, it's actually very convenient. But if you like it, we'll keep doing it. No, they're going to love it. They're going to love it. It's going to be great. It's going to be fantastic. Hi, guys. We ha we're doing a video today. Um, uh, uh, this is perhaps the beginning of a, a brief series that we are going to do uh, on some of the Westerosi elections. Uh, today, we are talking about the Great Council of 101. Uh, uh, does anybody want to give us a little bit of an introduction? Yeah, uh, I think I'm going to jump in. Also, I'm going to uh, assign myself a role here. We were, were having a conversation. We did a, a recent video of the uh, Aegon's uh, coup theory, uh, yeah. which was uh, great. And people loved it. And we just started having conversations about, I don't think there's a single non-sketchy election in all of uh, uh, Westerosi history, right? Uh, and then we just sort of like spitballed from there and we started putting like evidence together. Uh, and we said it would be fun to talk about it and like try and work backwards to figure out what happened. Uh, and I, oh, look, uh, you're adding text, uh, is uh, I, I'm going to try and play devil's advocate here and try and talk about how these elections could have been done in a fair manner, what the like way that looks like when you point out some evidence of some weird, sketchy, potentially magical stuff. Uh, however... We're starting with the one where I'm going to be the biggest clown in that position because this is the sketchiest one out of all of them. Uh, hope we're gonna. Whoa, that's a hot take. Oh no, I I will I will die on this hill. Whoa, John uh, Snow uh, was legitimately elected. I'll die on this hill. Uh, whoa, you're gonna be dying alone, Zach. <laughs> you're gonna die on this hill on your own. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. uh do we want to do like a little bit of an introduction to like the to to the progression of this series or do we want to just jump in on the council of 101 what do we think here i, I think a brief introduction would be would be good uh all right uh uh mira what are some of your favorite fraudulent elections um i actually john snow's election is probably my favorite because we get to watch it happen <laughs> in real time <laughs> Yeah, it's great. We have numbers. I made graphs. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a joke. I made. I, I have graphs yeah, no, because. I, and, and there's a there, magic there's talking a bird. There is. There's a talking bird. A talking bird influences the results of that election. That's crazy. <laughs> there's a cat. The cat might jump on me. Do not get your hopes up at home. The cat is not guaranteed to jump on me. Uh, uh, uh my favorite fraudulent election has got to be the great council of 233 that would be um, i think the runner up for me yeah it's uh uh it has all my favorite things uh it has uh egg it has dunk it has blood raven and it has uh a uh, murder of family members <laughs> which is all the things that i like in my fiction yeah so, have to says tom on present. the record uh, <laughs> And I'm gonna I'm gonna put my favorite down as the King's Moot. Uh, it might be it, it's up there. My favorite singular chapters of the series. It's nope. one of the ones I just sometimes reread for the joy of it. Outside of the whole book, I'll just pull up the King's Moot chapter. And be like, yeah, George R. R. Martin was having a good day that day. Uh, Zach, I was on a long drive and I called you several days ago and I said it's crazy that the King's Moot is the most legitimate election in the series. <laughs> Out of all the ones we're going to talk about, that's the one I'm confident I'm going to come out as the person arguing in favor of all these being largely fair. I'm going to walk away with the King's Moot being like, I don't know, like he did all the things he, he's just supposed to do to win a King's Moot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, like, is it is it fair 
to bribe other sea captains? Is it fair they to bribe? Can, actually, yes. Yeah, <laughs> it ter- turns out, yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> yeah. And, and if we're talking about a bribery contest, like he won country yeah. mile. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like a lot of elections are thinly veiled popularity contests. That's just that's just a popularity contest. They yeah, don't, there's no there's they no thinly veiled about, about that one. There's no like they weren't talking about the issues unless the issue was giving people money. Yeah. Well, yeah. but that's that's exactly the thing, right? They are electing the guy who's the best pirate who can collect the most loot. Yeah. And they demonstrate that by showing off how much loot they have collected. They are actually demonstrating their abilities as leader of the Ironborn. Uh, it's sort I'm, of like electing your like fundraising chair uh, for like your uh, organization. <laughs> The person who shows up with the most money is probably the guy you should hire. This, see, this, this is my fundraising chair, and you can support us on Patreon in the description. Uh, thank, yes, thank you, Zach. It's important to tell your jokes while someone else is drinking water. Sidebar, <laughs> I am of the opinion, I would love to know what you guys think of this take. I am of the opinion that the greatest political speech in the series happens at the King's Moot. Uh, uh, that being Asha's speech. Yes, that's a good one. Yes, hello, you cat. Hello. With the pine cones. Yes, yeah, like she argues for for full governmental reform, uh, uh, and she does it using pine cones as props, <laughs> which is just so much fun. The, I love that chapter. It's it's incredible. Uh, also on the list of things that we're going to talk about are uh, uh, Blood Raven's election as Lord Commander, which I find uh, uh, a little fishy. Um, uh, I'm also I'm I'm forcing a conversation about times when great councils should have happened but didn't. Mm-hmm. For example, it's kind of crazy after Robert's rebellion. They're just like, I guess you're king now. If there was ever a time for a great council, it feels like the. Uh, extinction of the Targaryens as a ruling dynasty would have been the time for it. Yeah, yeah. It like it seems like the time for a great council is the time when all the kings are dead. Yeah. Yes. Correct. Uh, but nah, it's just Robert. Uh, we are also similarly going to discuss um, the uh, 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 the planned great council that Rhaegar was planning, which I did not. I, I literally did not know about this until doing research for these couple of episodes. Uh, Rhaegar, before he died, was planning a great council, which is yeah. which is insane. Yeah. That was what the Tourney in Heron Hall was for. Yeah. Uh, uh, that, was like, that was like a nominating convention for a great council, which is insane. <laughs> yes, I know, Kat. Yes, hello. Hello. Yeah, just, I know. The people at home can, they, they, I know. They, li- they love you too. Get off me. <laughs> uh, I have an opening quote for discussion, and then I'm gonna kind of open the floor on these on, the, on this little debate we're gonna have. You guys ready? So ready. <clears throat> uh, unsurprisingly, the sea snake was bitterly disappointed when Prince Aemon died, and King Jaehaerys bypassed Aemon's daughter Rhaenys in favor of his brother Balin the Spring Prince. But now it seems the wheel had turned again and the wrong could be righted. Thus did Corlys and his wife, the Princess Rhaenys, arrive at Harrenhal in high state, using the wealth and influence of House Valerion to persuade the lords assembled that their son, Lenor should be recognized as heir to the Iron Throne. In these efforts, they were joined by the Lord of Storm's End, Boromund Baratheon, great-uncle to Rhaenys, and great-great-uncle to the boy Lenor, by Lord Stark of Winterfell, Lord Manderley of White Harbor, Lord Dustin of Barrington, Lord Blackwood of Raventree, Lord Bar Emmon of Sharp Point, Lord Keltigar of Claw Isle, and others. They were nowhere near enough. Discuss. Uh, See, here's the thing about that. Mm-hmm. The thing about that is that that is some absolute garbage. That is, that is absolutely madness. And that's where we're going to start. They uh, please become white text. They were nowhere near enough. There's a quote from uh, the, the World of Ice and Fire. Um, uh, 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 
describing the um, the political circumstances surrounding the Great Council uh, and suggesting, in, in fact, asserting quite confidently that Rhaenys and Lenor and uh, 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 Corlys had functionally zero support. And that, I think, is our is our starting point for the day. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, this is one of those scenes in in the series. I love the World of Ice and Fire. It's my favorite book in the series uh, uh, because of little things like this. Because the uh, uh, the World of Ice and Fire, the World Book, is in universe written by a maester. It has necessary political leanings. Uh, and uh, we're going to talk about it. We're going we're gonna to yeah. talk about some of those political leanings uh, uh, as we get to an understanding of how this is some, this is not, this is, this is not correct. Uh, and this is, this is where I have many questions because we never have, like you said with the Jon Snow election, we see how the election was conducted. We see vote counts. We have a very good understanding of how that went down. Uh, we, we have all, we, we don't even know what the up and down votes were at this one. We don't we don't we just know that they walk away with a considerable vote in favor of Viserys. We don't know how that was phrased. We don't know who was weighted. We don't know anything. We don't know if that was the only thing that ever came to a vote and if everything else was just discussed or if there were multiple rounds of like setting rules that they voted up and down on. Or if, we, if votes were split between Rainey's and Lenor. So like if there was if it was a three-way election, Viserys would get everybody who didn't support matrilineal succession and then the support for Rainey's' line would be split between Rainey's and Lenor. I think yeah. that this is a good a good moment to talk about the candidates. Uh, uh, let us start with um, Lenor Valerian, uh, who is the son of. Is that off the screen? Uh, almost. That's fine. Uh, Lenor Valerian, who is the son of Rhaenys and Corlys. Uh, we see him in House of the Dragon. We uh, do. He is an extraordinary baller. Uh, there may be light spoilers for House of the Dragon in this episode, but I don't think so. I think we're going to try to stay yeah, away. I think, I think we're going to mostly uh, avoid those. Lenor Valerian. Uh, and Mir, you actually, you brought up an, an interesting point. Um, that um that Rainey's in and of herself it is a stronger candidate for the throne than Lenor because Lenor at that time I believe is seven. Uh and Rainey's is like a, a whole adult and is clever and intelligent and capable and um uh uh and, and knows what she's doing. Uh, and they just, and they, they completely discount her. I believe that the, that the line that they use in, um, in the world of ice and fire is she was discounted on, uh, she was of course discounted because of her sex. Yeah. Uh, I, I think, yeah. Uh, and we don't know if discounted. We don't know if there were... This is like... I'm trying to craft away the, the vote at the end, which is super sus. Could be legit. Did they have exhaustive votes on, like, was there a, like, are we considering women yes, no vote, right? If that happened, like, Rainey's throwing all of her support behind Lenor makes a lot more sense than if there was just a discussion about that or did somebody sit down a rule the debate basically did somebody come down and say no voting for female candidates whatsoever zero chance and then did people debate that we just have so little direct information of this is what so and so said or did at this great council which is suspect because in uh 
Fire and Blood especially, we have plenty of things that are asserted to be direct quotes from, like, battles and, like, personal conversations. It's weird that we have oh. barely any for a actual legal proceeding, of all things. Although... I, election, essentially. Yeah. I, I think there is a lot to be gleaned, though, from the names that were given, because that was the thing that immediately jumped out to me. Um, that we've got a very clear uh, pattern here. Uh, uh, yeah, do you want to list off some of those names? That's actually what I would like to do next, is to list out the candidates. Oh, the, oh, the candidates. Okay, I was going to list out the supporters of the Valarians. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh for sure. Uh, that is... Oh, my God. That's just insane. That, Very telling. What, uh, uh, are you okay with coming back to that a little later? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, then let's get the candidates out on the board right now. Um, uh, Zach, name a candidate. How about that hedge knight that claims to be a, a child of Jairus? An unnamed hedge knight. Uh, who? And this is where, and this is where we get some electioneering because he's arrested and I think put to death right there. Yeah. Uh, uh, he was he was promptly arrested when his grace spoke the mistruth of his claim, I believe. Yeah. Pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> excuse Excuse me. Would you like to? Would you like to explain that? Uh, in Gremlin Hill. <laughs> I know, like, so this is this is a a claimed direct descendant of the king, and the king says no, he's not. And we're just um, like, yeah, that's fine. Unless Viserys had, or wow, uh, Jaehaerys had previously said like, no, he's not mine, because like what I'm hearing is like there is a king already at the council saying no, he's not mine. Uh, wait, oh, whoa, hold on. That's a great, <laughs> hang on, whoa, that's a great point. Which king? Because Jaehaerys is not at the council. They're very clear about that. Jaehaerys yeah. stayed home. One hedge knight uh, was seized in prison when the king exposed him as a liar. How so did there the must have been, him as a liar? He there, there must have been somebody there in communication with Jaehaerys. Who, Which who means Jaehaerys? him having his thumb on the scale has to be the case, right? Like, if he can get somebody arrested from there based on, no, that's not my kid. Like, I, I, I don't know what to say other than clearly he has a presence there. It Was was Septon Barth the hand at that point? I don't believe so. I believe Septon Barth died before... Um, uh, no, no. Uh, yeah, he died before Alisan. Yeah. Wait, that, so was, I wanna, was, this is another thing I want to talk about. See, we're just we're just starting to dig into stuff because <laughs> Alisan uh, at uh, uh, when uh, uh, Rhaenys was passed over uh, in 92 AC, Alisan was one of her principal supporters. And you're telling right. me that she died and then in like 13 months, I believe she died in 99 or 100. And now we're doing all this? This is happening right now? Mm hmm. Mm -mm. I don't buy it. Auto <laughs> Hightower. <clears throat> cough, 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 Auto Hightower. Cough, cough, cough. Yeah. <laughs> cough, cough, cough. <laughs> oh, uh, my Lord. So, okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> Give me some. I need more candidates. All right. With, there's so many trails to go down. We can't do them all and, and like slap shot. There has to be some organization. Give me a candidate. Our Archmaster Vagon. Uh, Vagon. Fantastic. So I'm just kind of like swinging around down the bottom here. Uh, yeah, that's perfect. I'm just kind of swinging around down the bottom here. These are going to be the candidates we discuss briefly. And then, and then, uh, uh, sort of get rid of <laughs> Give me another one. Uh, 
other than the hedge knight, there were eight lesser candidates because there's nine lesser candidates, including the hedge knight. Uh, but they were apparently dismissed immediately. Uh, yeah. And then uh, Rainey's yeah. daughter. Yeah. As well. Lena. Lena. Lena goes yeah. over here. We love Lena here. Uh, three of Sarah's bastards rocked up. Wait a minute. Hang on. Man, if, can you imagine how much different this all would have gone if Lena had rode to the council on Vagar? <laughs> Bro. I'm just scooching this a little bit. Yeah, yeah, there we go. I'm a little bit offset in the background, and I don't care. Uh, the bastard... Ba best... The... Bastards of S. I'm gonna go with S A E R A. Yeah. Nice. You did it. <laughs> the bastards of Sarah Targaryen, get on down there. Go. Yeah, let's go. One of them has an elephant. Oh yeah, he showed up with an elephant and like some other stuff to bribe with. I think. Yeah. <laughs> the. The, the the text I think goes some some th some things help the elephant did not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, keep them coming. Uh, a descendant of Lord Gaiman Targaryen, uh, by way of a younger daughter. Gaiman Gaiman's grandkid. Strictly speaking, is like Gaiman's great, 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 great grandkid, but that's mm -hmm. fine. Uh, yeah, yeah, and this is one of those one of those interesting things that we talk about in the show. Um, they spend so much time talking about Gaiman's grandchild and the bastards of Sarah Targaryen, how Sarah was like, no, I have my kingdom here. I couldn't, I wouldn't, I, uh, I shouldn't like to come back. Uh, and they give Lena and Rhaenys like two lines. It, it, this is, I don't like it. This is fishy. It's fishy. It's fishy. Give me more. Um, more. Uh, Busy uh, team. Uh, Oh, I thought we already had him. We don't. We don't have the man who won. Spoilers. Spoilers. Hey, <laughs> Viserys Targaryen, and I want you to line up just about right there. Yes, yes. Is that too far off? Hang on. All right. Now let me. Now uh, we're exploring a brand new. Um, ah! Oh no! Ah, it's a new He's program. It's a new program. Oh no! Did I crash my computer? Ah! No. no. Can you guys hear me? Fine. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Are you? Can you hear us? I think you're fine. You're fine. This hair is a Targaryen. This is a disaster, yes. and it's very on brand. It needs to line up, and I'm gonna lose my mind if it doesn't. This hair is Targaryen. Um, is there anyone I'm missing? I feel like there's one or two more. Yeah, there's a one supposed bastard, bastard. Wow, bastard of Maegor the Cruel. Bastard. We're gonna do it this way. We're gonna go bastard of Maegor the Cruel. Yeah, but people didn't believe him. Uh, he just he just showed up and said, "I'm Maegor's bastard," with like no evidence. Which is some real strong evidence for the Magor is infertile theory. Yeah. Um, because the, the, the Maester sort of offhandedly remarks they were willing, they, they, they were unwilling to believe that Magor got anyone but child. Yeah. And, and that is, yeah, that, that is one of the more compelling pieces for that theory. Uh, am I missing anybody? Uh, three unnamed, unknown candidates. Are those the bastards? No, like it's it. So on on the wiki, oops, 
it lists 14 and the last three, it just says unknown. And those are separate from Sarah's bastards. Okay. I'm gonna say three. And the wiki could be wrong. Uh, is this the- That lines up with what I was reading also, because uh, the numbers match. So is there's just three that we don't know. Welcome, this is the stream where we theorize on who the three unknown candidates were. I would love to hear people's ideas in the comments as to who those three uh, that we don't know are. All right. So this is our stage. <clears throat> this is this is what we're going to be working off of. Um, please do knock some candidates out of out of line for me. Okay. So they didn't even presumably get to a vote with that uh, unnamed hedge knight, right? Like. Uh, yeah. He uh, he was apparently arrested uh immediately. So So give me like one of these. Shoop, there he goes. All right. And this is where I want to talk about like how was that decided? Who decided this? They didn't like vote him off the island, right? Like clearly there was some sort of like force here that could have just arrested him. Yeah, right. They, uh, did that force gonna... influence everything else that happened there? We're going to talk about this again with um, uh, uh, the Great Council of 233, uh, where Blood Raven just doesn't even let a, like, like honestly, a pretty weak candidate doesn't even let him make a petition. Yeah, he, he gets arrested on the spot. He takes his head off immediately. When, and this is one of the crazier things for me, uh, uh, it probably would have been advantageous for him to keep him around. Yeah, have him lose legitimately. Have him lose on the record. Well, I have a new theory for you guys. <laughs> Which is that he would have won? That's also a possibility. Yeah. I don't know about that. Well, I, I think it was more that, like, Blood Raven. So I was doing some research about White Walls last night because this yes. is what I do. Yes. Yeah, so um, Blood Raven turned the castle down, salted the earth after exposing the second Blackfire Rebellion. So, that like, this is a guy, insane. he's like, I don't want to give a shred of a modicum of like plausibility. He's like, I don't care if they lose. If I allow them in to be a candidate, I am giving them a modicum of legitimacy that they do not deserve. God, uh, he's the best character in the whole series. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I was I was very excited about White Walls. Uh, that's going to be coming at y'all in in the next uh, video essay. Yes. Nice. Um, and and that's like. The argument I think we're going to get to at the end here is if you, if you, even if you don't think somebody's going to win, if you think that like this is the perfect example of it, seeing how close it is might lead to a violent result. You might want to skew the results to make the people think that they are woefully, woefully lacking in support, which I think is something that's going to come up a lot in this conversation. <laughs> And also to like delegitimize their children's claims because, um, you know, saying this black fire is so like illegitimate and not appropriate to have here. Like it, it also is saying any other black fire would be met with the same result. Whereas if you let him enter the election and he loses, that actually invites more black fires to try. Yeah, this is a this is a fine point uh, uh, for next video. Yes. Okay. Next one. Uh, 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 we we have to we have to save the um, Great Council of Two Thirty Three mod madness for the Great Council of Two Thirty Three video because this one's going to be long already. So so <laughs> we have every step of this we don't have clarity on. Like how how we're like claims were dismissed does not like imply the procedure we know there was a vote at least one vote happened we know that because they say 20 to 1 which yeah. as tom's about to say are some sus numbers yeah uh yeah so was there only the one vote was there more voting beforehand 
was the voting that was done in the final round, the same kind of voting that was done in the previous rounds, where there are people leading this grand council, great council. We don't know. And that's what bothers me the most about this, because the only argument and I'm going to make the uh, great council of 101 was actually a legitimate argument, which is, I know, haha, not true. But uh, the only way I can see something like that happening is if everything was voted on by a majority repeatedly, they set rules, they consider different candidates, and that was the final vote. And the opposition was fundamentally like broken by the end and was like boycotting it or giving up is the only way I could see the results that we get. Like that, if, this if is there's an up a... or down vote, can women inherit? One, I think we would have heard about it because the, there's a lot of people who would be using that for political purposes later if they had that exact document. So I have to assume there wasn't. But if there was a vote that could be kind of used for that, they would still probably use it. I, I can't believe. First off, I can't believe you're jumping to the end of the video. So, I, <laughs> well, because we need to. Well, they said Rainis was uh, quickly dismissed. Yeah. So what? Let, let's How? talk about it. How let's, was she quickly dismissed? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Right. The this is the the entirety of the description we get on voting. <clears throat> Though Lord and Lady Valerion were eloquent and open-handed in their efforts on behalf of their son, the decision of the Great Council was never truly in doubt. By a lopsided margin, the lords assembled chose Viserys Targaryen as the rightful heir to the Iron Throne. Though the maesters who tallied the votes never revealed the actual numbers, it was said afterward that the vote had been more than 20 to 1. That's 96 to 4, or 96% to 4%, right? Oh, yeah, I'm putting that in there. Yeah. Whoop. And can, can, I really, I really want to talk about uh, these uh, the the enumerated supporters and the ones who are conveniently left off the list. And I'm very, yeah. I have a lot of thoughts, and I'm very excited. All right, okay. Uh, I'm Excellent. gonna I'm gonna put a four here, right? And I'm gonna put a ninety six over here. And then uh, before I before I do that, draw. I want to talk about. Ah! I want I want to jump back to the okay, the how were uh, how were the like was it said like okay bastards can't inherit by like voice vote right do they just say like all those in favor of letting a bastard inherit say i and then all some people favor, some uh, people say i and they, they. like did well, they do that with women too i, like, I think the issue with the bastards um half of the bastards it was that like they couldn't prove their claim um yeah. and then sarah's bastards it doesn't say it just says passed over it could be that nobody voted for Sarah's bastards because nobody likes Sarah and nobody likes foreigners. Yes. Well, the, then there's like, did they do this rank choice through multiple rounds? Uh, did they like knock out the lowest person every round? Or was it like, did they vote on rules? Um, voting on rules to uh, establish at, uh, like is how the house elects people. The house goes in, elects a speaker and then sets rules for themselves every year. Uh, and they can change those rules to govern themselves. Uh, that's the same with party conventions. Uh, I wanted to bring up, I put in the notes here. Uh, I, I've tried to find real election parallels. This is something I wanted to bring up before I forget about it. Uh, eight, uh, 1844 Democratic National Convention. Uh, early, early in the proceedings, they uh, decided to vote on the rules and they required the nominee to get two thirds and people weren't sure how that was going to work out, and they all thought it was going to be in their advantage, but it led to uh, half the Van Buren people voting for it, and the other half not, and it ended up being the sole reason why Van Buren didn't get the nomination. There could have been some rules like chicanery early on that fundamentally locked out someone like Rainey's or Lenor from winning by them voting up and down on rules, and we just don't know that. Yeah, Which, so the, that's, that's the only the way I could see a blowout was if like they voted away all their ability to win this legitimately and they had functionally given up by the end. Because 96 to 4 is not a normal election no, by any stretch it, of the day. It, like, it is not. And that's that's what makes this so crazy. And I well, like we're talking about ballot procedure, but we haven't really discussed the 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 flipping uh, uh, lizard lion in the election chamber. Uh, uh, that this is 
insane. Yes. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. They, by a margin of 20 to 1, that means for every one vote Lenor got, Viserys Targaryen got 20. There's only... The, the, we, we learned this. They say over a thousand... Um, over a thousand lords showed up. You're telling me that in a thousand lords, Lenor Valerion got 40. Now that's assuming that it's a stand-up election. And Zach will come back and talk more about like how this could be a not how they could make this yeah. a not stand-up vote a little bit later. But I want to say, but even even if this is like weighted that. vote based on your title, even if like the Lord Paramounts had stronger votes than the lords and then like they had some other sort of system there were lord paramounts who seemed like they were in lanor's yeah. camp and we have exactly, evidence I'm, of this i'm glad you brought that up because mira i think that that a little bit a little while ago you mentioned some of rainy's uh i'm sorry lanor's support let's go ahead and talk about that so thank you i've been very excited <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah on this side by the four i'm gonna stack up the people who are in league with lanor valeria yeah uh, so House Stark, I'm gonna start with them. Yeah, you know them. Yeah, you, you know those guys. Uh, those guys that like you control make up the, the largest Lord. kingdom in the Seven the Kingdoms. North. Yep. Uh, House Baratheon. You know those guys, right? Yeah. Yeah, you know it's the whole Stormlands. Uh, 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 Lord Manderly. Yeah, you know those guys, right? Yeah, we love like, Lord Manderly. Like the, like the, I don't know, like the eighth richest family in Westeros or something? Mm-hmm. Uh, Lord Blackwood. Which is like, whatever. Oh, no, I, so this is, I have a, I have a thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, this is, a, this is gonna be a thing. Um, uh, Lord Dustin of Barrowton. Which... I love Barrowton. I find it fascinating because I'm fascinated by grave sites and it, that's the only castle that's like explicitly said to be built on a burial mound. So, uh, dude, they, like they're just so cool. They, yeah. Their castle is on a giant's grave, which is just so fucking hardcore. It is. Yeah. Well, I won't, that's another conversation. We'll, uh, um, <laughs> we'll, and, the, and, and then the Bar Emmons and the Celtigars. The bar, yeah, uh, yeah, the bar, bar Eamon, em, Eamon, Eamon, the bar, E A M M O N, Eamon? I think so. Yeah. Um. So, sell tigars, and of course, um, Rainey's Valerian and Corley's Valerian. Yeah. So this list is very easy to break down and i have a very simple like explanation for why we're given this list and why the numbers came out the way that they did according to the maesters like okay so okay um the baratheons rainies is half baratheon there is no way that the maesters could could fudge it and say the baratheons didn't support rainies right so what i'm thinking is these are the lords who were the most vocal in their support for Lenor through Rainies, right? So there's our explanation for the Baratheons, very straightforward. Everyone else on the list is not Andal, right? With the exception of the Manderleys, but they're kind of weird because uh, the Manderleys are like so far up the Stark butt that like they will do whatever the Starks do and be outspoken about it, right? Um, but the Bar Emmons and Celtigars are Valyrian, right? The Starks, the um, the Dustins, and the Blackwoods are all first men, right? So it's an and all tradition of not inheriting through the woman. The first men, the Valyrians, and the Dornish don't have this. And so I like there is a, a like as I'm looking through the list of who was there, I'm looking at it as which families are and all and which families are not. What an interesting take. And 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 these would be the families that the Maesters couldn't lie about. 
you know, they can't be like, oh, how Stark secretly supported Viserys. No, like, the, no. Yeah, ain't nobody going to buy that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, and, and I think it's very telling because then on the other side, our list of enumerated supporters is actually lighter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, can I can I list those off? Oh, pl- oh please. Yeah. So on Viserys' side, we have uh, Lord Lannister. That tracks. Yeah. Yeah, and you'll you'll see. It's it's very telling. Uh, Lord Peak. I can't it's remember which Peak, but I don't like any of them. It is P E A K E Peak. Yep. I have a theory about why Unwin is called Unwin, and it has to do with uh, Tolkien. There's uh, a, un, un, unwin uh, is what happens when you don't tie win. It's <laughs> pretty good. That was really good. That was, that was good. Didn't Davos, didn't Davos bring a bunch of unwins into Storm's End? Oh, no, no, there, there was salt beef and salt fish, too. Uh, and salt election and salt the earth. <laughs> salt, <laughs> salt Goodman. Salt. <laughs> <laughs> It's all right now. Just do salt and smoke. No, yeah, Davos, <laughs> Davos was the one who negotiated the salt treaties. Oh, uh, da- that would have been that's a really good, like, pun episode one. Uh, uh born amidst Saul and smoke. <laughs> oh, no. Um, I've got two, two more for our list. Sure. Uh, Grover Tully. Oh, that's an interesting one. Well, and I have a thought about that too. Yeah. Uh, and then Damon Targaryen. Who is the only one listed who's not like a lord of his own place in his own right? Although at this point, uh, like he uh, stands to be the, the Prince of Dragonstone, but at this point, he's just Prince Damon of nothing. Uh, yeah, he, he's he's uh, he's he's Prince Damon who doesn't hang out at Runestone. Yeah. Uh, so ooh, so okay. So uh, the Lannisters are very Andal and very dickhead. So this does not surprise us. Um, and, and the Lannisters are gonna, uh, uh, okay, so like I'm giving away the conceit here that like I very much believe that Otto Hightower was behind all of this. Yeah. Um, and so the Lannisters are gonna ally themselves with the Hightowers because they stand to gain the most financially and uh, by preserving status quo because this is the way that things have always been for the Andals, right? Uh, The Tullys at this point were heavily influenced by the Lannisters, right? So the Lannisters swing one way, the Tullys are apt to follow, unless they have a really good reason not to. Uh, What's fascinating, who we have silent here are the Tyrells, and Lord Tyrell was actually there, and uh, uh, Lady Arryn, and uh, she wasn't present, but she sent a Lord... Royce on her behalf. And again, we're seeing a first men family. So we have the Starks, Baratheons, Lannisters, and Tullys accounted for. The Dornish are out. Like the Martells are uh, uh, spectating, but not participating. Yeah. So what are the Tyrells and Aaron's? Why, why isn't that listed who they supported? Um, and I would think that Lady Aaron sending a first man of Royce on her behalf would have been supporting Lenor if the pattern holds, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and also, there's an argument that the Lady Aaron would be far more sympathetic to the yeah. son of a daughter inheriting than mm-hmm. someone else. Because I, she I think inherited a title. She clearly believes that's a, a legitimate function of feudalism. We're it's also weird. Be- if we're assuming they all get one equal vote, by the way, that yeah. the vote of like the Blackwoods is equivalent to the vote of the Starks. What's the point in feudalism, right? What's the point <laughs> of having a mutual vote? Well, so I mean, like a family like the Freeze is gonna, they might hop different, you know, a family like the Florence might hop different, but for the most part, they're gonna fall in line. Like you have families like the Manderleys who are gonna be like, oh, the Starks are doing this, we're doing this too. I was also gonna say, when did Damon get married? When did Damon, when did Damon marry Rhea Royce? When did Demi get married? That's a good mm, question. Mm, Continue talking, and we'll discover. Yeah, uh, because it, looking at it from the perspective of the first men jump one way, the Andals jump the other, 
why on earth would the Royces and Aarons support Viserys unless they were given a good reason to? A good reason like Daemon Targaryen, right? Yeah. So we're talking about bribes. That's a, a phenomenal bribe. Ninety-seven, ninety-seven AC, he got married. He's so, all, he is married to Rhea Royce at this okay. point. I but mean, they also was, probably know that marriage is not in great condition by that point, also. Well, but so that actually, I mean, I I think it doesn't discount the idea that the marriage was planned based on knowing knowing that people would fall this way. Uh, we're actually kind of cycling into the, into something that I was going to want to, that, that I wanted to do as we were getting to this point in the discussion is to start speculating on some other houses that I, that we think would support either side. I think I can, do you, do you guys have a problem with me putting house Aaron over on the left here? No, I think hundred percent if house Aaron is a dog in this fight. It's, uh, in Lena Valerian's camp and the only way their vote went in other ways, if yeah, somebody errantly chose the other side on their behalf yeah. and also if you can vote by proxy then that might be the shenanigan right there if the thousand lords showed up and another five thousand didn't show up and they all voted by proxy that might explain the margin but the, you guys there's no indication of that right you just hear something crazy about Yorbert Royce your, your, that is that's, his name. A, that's a great name yeah, yeah. So uh, he may have died in 101, 102, or 103, and he may have been Rhea Royce's father. We don't... Uh, it's just oddly silent. Okay. On these counts. But but it's, it's it says that he might have been. So I'm yeah. like, uh, maybe he definitely was Rhea Royce's father, and maybe he definitely died in 101. And if he was, like, critically ill... Like, Maybe he well, really died in 101 to guarantee the succession of Runestone. Well, that's yeah. awesome, too. I was thinking he might not have been well enough to like actually be mentally present while he was there. So, okay, so, okay, so, so check this out. Um, Damon supported Viserys, right? So, yes. this is an instance where we have Damon and Otto on side. So it, rather than Otto planning Damon's marriage to sway the Royces, uh, what, what is far more likely is Damon just whoops out his sword and says, hello, Papa, uh, you will be supporting my brother, and uh, then kills him conveniently right after the election. Hi, uh, uh, my name is Damon. We met at the wedding. Uh, murdering in-laws is something of a pastime of mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. No, he does that a lot, actually. I, no, like, I just thought of, like, three or four more examples. Yeah. Yeah, he does murder in-laws a lot, yeah. Spoilers, 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 spoilers. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Well, we've already seen him murder in-laws. Yeah. Yeah. Well, by this no, point, yeah. In the in the series, strictly speaking, uh, we have we have seen him manslaughter one in law and uh, uh, pretend to murder another. <laughs> yes. Whereas at this point in the books, he has for sure killed Lenor and probably killed his <laughs> wife. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What about um, Vaymond Valerian? Vaymond. Is Vaymond? Yeah, no, Vaymond that, is his, like, uncle-in-law, I guess? Yeah, definitely. He straight up murdered an in-law. Like, yeah. literally cut him in half. Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> hold on. He legally executed Vaymond. No, because it wasn't on... Well, okay, so, I mean... You it was determined to be legal afterwards. You want like my lawyer take? Like most state-sponsored police killings. I do want uh, your lawyer take, yes. <laughs> So, so Viserys had decreed that the punishment for calling uh, Rhaenyra's sons bastards was for their tongues to be cut out. Mm -hmm. So Damon took it, took it upon himself to be Judge Judy and Executioner. Judge Judy and Executioner. 
Yeah, that was, that was um, <laughs> John, uh, yeah, and said, and yeah. medical punishment that was greater than what had been, we'll say, enacted into statute. So Damon might have had an argument to stand on if he'd walked up to Damon and and pulled his tongue out and cut the tongue, right? Because yeah. then he would say, "I'm just enforcing the law that you enacted, brother." But by killing him, mm -hmm. um, in in like an extrajudicial killing, uh, with, like going beyond the statutory maximum, we'll say, uh, he he, it was murder. Well, let me let me counter that with what I think Damon would say to that. He would he would say that that was definitely extrajudicial. It was especially judicial. It was particularly <laughs> that it was this particularly judicial killing. That was that was super ju judicial. Yeah, it yeah. was the most <laughs> killing of all killings. It was, it was much. Judgment. I was judging him super hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Prejudicial, even. You know what's wild? They had dinner like two hours later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they they had like a Thanksgiving. <laughs> well, well, after after the murder, I think I think we're all starving, right? <laughs> da Damon da and like and who was it who was fostered on Driftmark? Uh, uh, Raina. Uh, is it Bela Bela or Raina? I think Raina. Raina. Raina was fostered on Driftmark, and Damon cuts her uncle in half and she will she grew up with him they they grew up she grew up with it they they would have hung out yeah, <laughs> yeah but like yeah, he, that, he was a prick the family was in this room yeah. it's, it's insane <laughs> and they they go and have like a nice family dinner after that <laughs> i mean viserys was like falling apart at that point he may not have remembered what had happened it's the nicest scene in game of thrones and it was such a disaster. <laughs> Man, the series so, is good. I don't know if you guys know yeah, this. It is. So pivot back to like the the numbers here, the yeah. big red yeah, yeah, numbers. Yeah. All right. I have more. The, how? How so all right. The, the, this is and this is like my my whole I made this whole document so that I could say this sentence. This this Zach. Mm -hmm. This does not total four. Well, and and I, I was thinking about blowout elections. I have more notes. So, oh please. Uh, there was recently a blowout election in Philadelphia, as there usually is in a general election. Uh, Terrell Parker uh, defeated David O. Uh, by what amounts to uh, fifty points, which is not by fifty. It is. She won 74.67% of the vote. He won 24.41. That's what a law usually looks like in a fair democratic system. You had no chance, but there is a contingent of people who want to vote for you. They just don't come anywhere close to a majority. They just but don't have never, the demographics. Yeah, you. the people who want to vote for you exist. They just, they just don't exist enough. Uh, and if, honestly... This was a uh, like seventy four twenty four election. I would believe it a lot more. Yeah, if, I believe it they, that there were some really loud vocal supporters for Lenor who were trying to make a point because they knew they were going to get their asses kicked. Because that's something you can do in elections. If you know you're going to lose, lose loudly. Go down screaming, kicking, like making as much noise as possible because you might make it easier for somebody else to win down the line is a legit strategy. And this is the perfect thing because this is where precedent is built, right? If you are talking about uh, wanting to make sure the child, the, the son of a daughter can inherit in the future, get your arguments on the record for sure. There's people taking notes 100%. Have the Starks and Baratheons say, I think Lenor is the person who should inherit, and here's why. If you revisit this in 20 years, you can go right back to the same argument and say, I've been saying this for 20 years. Right, and, and, and so I think... Oh, sorry. But but that's not seemingly what happens. It doesn't seem like they uh, knew they were going down and they're going down swinging. They seemed like shocked by the results of 20 to 1. They thought they had a shot. They're running a very different sort of campaign. Uh, the they other were handing out cash. About, the other, the other election I want to talk about is I did find one margin that is almost exactly like this, and it almost makes me think George R. R. Martin knows it. 
It is the 1927 presidential election in Liberia. Uh, uh, where... I don't think George knows about that. Hang on, hang on, Zach. Oh, he knows, hang on, because hang on, I was about on. to say something. Hang on, we, you made a whole lot of points there, all of them good. Uh, I need to, I need, as the moderator, I need to, uh, to pause you, and we're going to yeah. have to come back to the presidential election in Liberia. <laughs> Tom, you know this one, don't you? <laughs> this seems like a good place to break. Hang on, Tom, 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 do you know, do you know the story behind this one at least? I, 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 I heard it on a podcast a long time ago. <laughs> now, I wonder if George R. R. Martin listened to the same podcast. I'm, I was like, hmm. we'll, we'll come back in just a minute because <laughs> you're right. A, a blowout most of the time, even in like, like, like a, a ridiculous an area of ridiculous disparity, uh, is is maybe eighty nine eleven, right? Like you you it's so it's very hard the to get eighty nine eleven is incredibly rare. Still, yeah. there yeah. are people who will know that you uh you know are going to win who will vote for the other guy despite you even if they don't like you, just because they can. Like, yeah unopposed candidates will lose like 3% of the vote because people will write in to oppose unopposed candidates. I do like, it all the time. Yeah. I, I think I've only ever seen unopposed candidates get 92 maybe. Yeah. Right. And like, that's usually what you get. And, 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 and Mira, I really want to hear your take on this. This is insane. These numbers. Right. And, and so this is where, uh, Zach pointed out precedent, right? I, I, I think it's possible that Lenor did lose, uh, but by a much more realistic margin, but Maesters or Andals or Hightowers or whoever it is that we're alleging is doing this is thinking about the future, is thinking about the precedent. That's why these bastards are discounted, right? And yes. so to their mind, Lenor lost anyway. So why not just say he lost by a lot more so that way we have a leg to stand on in the future, and we can say the precedent from the Great Council of 101, because that's exactly what we hear when uh, Rhaenyra is named heir. Everybody says, well, the Great Council of 101 made it law. And like, no, the fuck, it didn't. But it, when you have a margin this wide, you, you do have an argument that it's like, well, virtually every lord in Westeros supports this. And, you know, so how can we argue with them, right? And so that would be the purpose of skewing the numbers this badly. And I had an idea. This is point, another bullet point. Sidebar, um, yes. Sidebar. Mm -hmm. Sidebar. Well, so as far as like uh, uh, ways that this could be thrown and, and ways that like the numbers might legitimate, legitimately shake out this way, um, the Lord Commander election for Jon Snow we are told that Sam was able, okay, Sam was able to throw the election because he convinced uh, the Lords from Eastwatch and the Shadow Tower to vote for John. And so that meant all of the votes from Eastwatch and the Shadow Tower were thrown in behind John. So how many Lords from uh, the Vale, like realistically, are going to be going all the way to Heron Hall? Right. So the, the lords that were closest were the ones from the Riverlands and the ones from the Westerlands. Right. Are you going to for all the, you know, uh, are you going to come all the way down for, well, I guess the North and the Stormlands did support, uh, uh, Lanor. but I think, I think the veil was kind of the, the linchpin here that Royce was not only voting on behalf of the Aarons, he might have been voting on behalf of like 85% of the Vale Lords who couldn't travel to Aaron Hall, right? So where- Voting by proxy, yeah. Interesting. Do you yeah. think that there's a chance that, that Lord Royce flipped, taking the, the entire Vale contingent with him? Oh, he, he came in intending to support Lenor, and he would he got persuaded to do something otherwise. Yeah, I think I think Lady Aaron intended for him to support Lenor, and uh, Lord Royce, being Damon's father-in-law, was like, mm, nah. Whew, if and, that's the case, that decision hasn't aged well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we didn't get a lot um, in exchange for that one. 
So, so what it is, the reason we don't know when he died is he, he was Lord Royce in 101. And then next time we hear about the family in 103, uh, Rhea Royce is lady. So he sure. died at some point. Uh, very suspicious. So uh, we're going to come back to suspicious deaths in a minute, by the way. Yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, so I was just gonna, I was just going to say, like, I, I think we can identify houses in each region that would vote against, you know, their overlord. Like the Boltons might vote differently from the Starks. The Freys might vote differently from the Tullys. Um, but if 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 some of these dissenting families showed up, like, let's say we get the Boltons there. Let's say we get the Florence showing up and voting against the Baratheons. But then no one from the Vale really attends Nobody from the Reach really attends. So all of the missing Veil and Reach houses are going to be proxy voted along with the Aarons and the Tyrells. Wait a minute. 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 Let's make this. I, I can make this these numbers work working on this principle. But it requires me. It requires me to assert that a Stark of Winterfell was angling for civil war. Because I can't, no. make, I can't even make those numbers with with the the Vale, the Westerlands, uh, the Crownlands, and the Riverlands. I still can't make those numbers. I can maybe get to seventy five. Well, yeah. and that's what I'm saying. I think legitimately they may have had sixty, maybe seventy, and the reason that we see this falsification of numbers jumping us from 70 to 96 is the issue of precedent. I so, want to, I want to, I want to come back to that in a minute because I, now you got me thinking about proxies and I want to, I want to come back and talk about that when we talk about ways that we could make this number happen legitimately. Uh, uh, but first, Zach, I think you wanted to kick us off on that front. I, I want to talk about if, if George has any amount of election nerd in him, and he might. Uh, he can have a little... He, never mind. <laughs> true, true. true. <laughs> would, you, would you like to? <laughs> would you like to, yeah. Um, uh, Edit that um, out. If, if he does, like... <laughs> yeah, we got to say... So, so, all right, I, either we need to censor most, that or send it to George. Those are the only two things we can do. The most Someone fraudulent it to George. election in history was the 1927 Liberian general election. There were less than 15,000 registered voters, and the winning candidate won with over 200,000 votes. The margin of that election <laughs> was 96.23 to 3.77. If you round that, it's 96 to 4, which is the exact same margin as this yeah. if you put it 20 to 1. He won yeah, 20 the, to 1. And, and the Maesters it was did inconceivable. Not, the Maesters did not say 20 to 1. They said more than 20 to 1. Yes. Yeah. No, there's 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 no way. The, 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 if George R. R. Martin has any knowledge of like what a fraudulent election looks like, uh, because fraudulent elections do happen in autocracies all the time, Vladimir Putin uh, did not win that election by as much as you think he did. Uh, you know, uh, all those other uh, famous dictators don't win by that much. They bolster the numbers to make it look like it's inconceivable to even challenge them. That's what this looks like. It looks so much like a, and fuck you for thinking it was going to go any other way sort of election. Uh, and that's one thing with proxies. It could be the case that they were... Uh, saying, oh, I'm here representing so-and-so lord who just so happened to not get an invitation. Although, if a thousand were in attendance, I don't know how many lords had voting rights in this. Yeah, Does every and, landed person have a voting right? Would sir, I've been finally reading the Duncan Egg novellas. Yeah. Would Sir Eustace, if this happened, it's be able so to It's so good, vote? Zach. They're so good, aren't it's they? so good. But, like, well, and it makes me wonder where the line was drawn because if you come and say, I'm from the Reach and I have... 80 landed knights behind me, but none of them could come here. But rest assured, I'll vote for all of them. You could skew the numbers pretty hardcore. And who's to say 
how many landed knights you have uh, in the reach, right? Like, Sir Eustace is one of those people who could get lost to history, like, because he has no successors, has no heirs. He is the landed knight to a not particularly important lord, right? If uh, Lord Lannister is the only person from the Westerlands to show up and he says, I have, you know, 20 houses beneath me, each of them have, well, I did the count, we'll call it roughly 100 landed knights, and they're all voting for Viserys Targaryen, well, all of a sudden, that number starts to look a lot more conceivable if you're allowed to vote by proxy. Did we, est- Mira, did you say that, that we established that that Lord Rice was there on behalf of the Aarons, or were the Aarons yes. just not mentioned? No, he was there. It is affirmatively stated he was there on behalf of the Aarons. Do we, okay, we, I'm going to put in the middle here something about, like, I'm going to just, like, jots about the voting system. That pretty much confirms for me that proxies are permitted. Yeah. Yeah. With, uh, 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 this is, uh, this is multi-round voting with proxies. Uh, Zach, tell people what proxies are in case they don't know. Proxies is a system where people are allowed to vote on behalf of somebody else. Usually there's a ton of documentation and usually this is in systems that are not governmental. Voting by proxy is something that happens if you're a shareholder. A lot of shareholder elections allow votes by proxy where I can give somebody the right to show up uh, and make decisions on my behalf after I consult with them for 30 minutes over the phone because I don't want to fly out to San Francisco and spend three days in a hotel staring down some CEO because I have a job, which happens a lot. Uh, But it's very rare to make governmental decisions with proxies. Almost unheard of, actually. But it seems to be that that is very much the case for this great council, which is... uh, I should note, it's also very much the case for more than one election in this series <laughs> well yeah we'll talk about the john snow one which is yeah. the most sketch part of it yeah yeah sorry i'm just making notes uh because i'm adhd and i'm gonna forget things i've been doing the okay. same all right all right, all right. I think of a historical parallel i'm just googling it and writing it down <laughs> Mira, i want to uh, Mira. i want to bounce off of that that you just is, uh, do, you, uh, do you want to say what you just wrote yeah 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 So, okay, so if we're operating on the idea that uh, any lords who don't attend their vote will be counted along with their lord paramount. So, for example, let's say the Boltons don't show up, their vote is going to be counted as if they voted along with uh, House Stark. So let's say Stark and Baratheon vote on behalf of all of the North and all of the Stormlands and like virtually no lords from the North and the Stormlands show up. So like 99% of the votes from the North and the Stormlands go to uh, Laenor. The number of lords, the number of humans that the Reach and the Westerlands are able to field are going to be significantly larger. And you might as well throw in the Riverlands. I think individual river lords are most likely to show up to Harrenhal because Harrenhal is in the Riverlands. Um, but I, I think the number of uh, lesser lords in the Westerlands and the Reach is going to be significantly greater than the number of lesser lords in the Stormlands and the North. Uh, I think that I think that you are correct, but I don't I don't think it's by a factor of I, I can't imagine. No, no. So, 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 so the the thing that the thing that I'm doing is looking at ten different factors that all combined could get you to that seventy five number le- legitimately. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But but no. see then like. Uh, uh, hmm. I, I, I am, I am, I, it's funny, Zach, I have started to play devil's advocate over on my side because I am now trying to figure out how you could get to 96 for legit. Well, now, now I'm thinking I've, I've done to heal a little bit of my life back. I, I, I Don't obviously. Do it. Don't give information to the internet. Since I'm very animated here and bringing up specific examples, elections of all sorts are obviously a point of serious interest to me. And I, you, you caught me when I'm back in uh, my hometown and I don't have my pin collection. I only have two with me. Uh, this one, uh, 
more recent than this one, obviously. But uh, I I think about this stuff all the time, how primaries differ from, like, uh, generals, how, like, internal elections happen. I'm thinking about internal party elections. A lot of that is determined by who shows up and who shows up consistently. Like, if, uh, you know, you have, like, a county committee uh, and, like, you know, one city has twice the population of the other, but they have a lot of people who don't show up to meetings, and the other has a bunch of people who show up to meetings all the time, that smaller city can outvote the larger city because of the absences. But if you allow proxies, all of a sudden people showing up is bad for you because they can defect. So if Lord Stark got, like, most of his, like, landed knights and most of his, like, uh, lesser lords to show up, that was to his detriment because he could have just lied and said they all agreed with him if they didn't show up, if proxy voting is allowed. But if proxy voting was only allowed with like some sort of express declaration, then turnout might have been a factor if, because it's at Harrenhal, all the Western lords and all the River lords were like, well, it's right here anyways. And they all were compelled by Grover's arguments or Lord Lannister's arguments. That's a way you could explain it quasi legitimately is there were a thousand lords there but most of them were river lords and most of them were western lords but again you'd feel like that would be documented by somebody anybody although i could see that usefully being forgotten that like turnout was low and disproportionately in one camp you might want to etch that from the record if you're trying to make it seem like you had consensus i'm doing some research on the fly here yeah, Tom, you look like you're chewing on a thought there. Yeah, yeah. Just, 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 just hear me out, okay? Yeah. We have proxies. I'm getting your numbers, Tom. Stark, Manderley, Blackwood, uh, Dustin, all Dustin vote as a block. Also, that's interesting because we have Lord Blackwood showing up and disagreeing with Grover Tully, which means we can confirm that Tully did not have every River Lord in tow. There was yeah. at least one notable defection, although it might have just because been because the Brackens were voting the other way, honestly. But yeah, the, there must necessarily have been at least one defection from the Tully camp because they can't vote on the same side. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like one of the it's like a logic puzzle. Uh, we know that, that that to cross the election, the 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 Blackwood and the Bracken have to cross in different voting blocks. Uh, all right. I can make I can make an I can make ninety six four. Okay, do it. Let's hear your ninety six four. I can make ninety six four. Proxies for Lannister Tully. See, oh man, that's so that's still really small. That's still, yeah, that's still like I don't think they have to, they have to essentially have none of their own people show up, which we know is not true. They would have to potentially lie about the number of landed people if we're assuming every landed person gets a vote. And, and we're, Wait, we're and then vote can't be weighted either because if vote is weighted, the Starks and Baratheons being on one side means that a four for Lenor uh, in this, a, a like blowout in that manner can't be the case if Lord Paramounts have a higher vote than some landed knight. And it feels kind of insane if Sir Eustace and, uh, I don't know, Doran Martell, if this was to happen in a different year, although Sir Eustace was much earlier, I don't know, uh, if, Sir, if Sir Eustace and whoever was in charge of Doran at the time had an equal vote, I feel like the person who's in charge of one of the seven kingdoms would complain that some guy who owns a creek gets the same level of vote for him. Yeah, Again, but, what's the point of feudalism? But 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 Lord Martell, Prince Martell, uh, gets to gets to suck it up because he gets fifty proxies by default at least. Yeah, and th and that's the that's the wrong and, right. And he can say to them, "You guys get to stay home, right? You guys yeah. fucking stay here. I'm going to vote on your behalf." But. We for sure we're we're overlooking one of the most significant pieces to this. Um uh 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 
that it is said explicitly that there's active campaigning going on. Yeah, which is usually only the case when it's close. Yeah, and and like your Corliss Valerian at this time in his life is, I I, I believe at least the richest man in the Seven Kingdoms. I want to say the richest man in the world. I, uh, I would agree with that assessment. Yes, he he has, like you're telling me that Kingsmoot style, right? I get to walk up to you and say hi. I'm going to give you one hundred and fifty thousand dollars for your vote. And you say no, and he's like, okay, no problem. Let me get in another three or four stacks of that. I I can get past 5%. <laughs> I think I can get past 40. Yeah, uh, honestly. And he had and so much. And, and on top of that, on top of that, okay. Yeah, not only, on, sorry, not only was he the, the richest, like if he navally declared war on the Seven Kingdoms just by himself, it didn't House Valerian they would have had a huge naval uh like like impact they could probably blockade king's landing and they had dragons they had dragons too right mira just provided us with numbers Math. we'll come back we'll come back to that we'll come back to that we'll come back yeah, give me a second because <laughs> <laughs> because uh, uh uh let me read that let me read that again that that line about corlys and rainies uh uh Doop, 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 doop. Shoop, 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 shoop. Um, the Lord and Lady, the Lord and Lady Valerian were eloquent and open-handed in their efforts on behalf of the son um, of their son. Open-handed means handing out cash, and bribes will not bring you House Baratheon. You have them by default. They will not bring you House Stark, uh, uh, because they're Starks and they do, they do what they're going to do and you're not going to tell them not to change their minds. Yeah. Uh, 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 and you don't need to bribe the Celtigars or the bar Emmons because they are, um, uh, uh, Oh, Mira's is going to mute and she'll be right back. Um, yeah. you don't need to bribe the Celtigars and the bar Emmons. They are Valerian bannermen functionally. Um, so who, who did you bribe the Blackwoods? Yeah. Exactly. Like, if you're giving out all these gifts, like you're you're not just giving those out willy nilly, you are doing that to cut deals. There's no like laws here preventing this, unless there were, in which case they probably shouldn't be openly campaigning with money. But you you give cash in politics to have a foot in the door for future conversations, and. Usually it's the other way around. Usually you're paying, you're giving a ton of money to a candidate so that you can come back later and say, hey, I helped you get elected. Let's talk about this issue I care a lot about. And that's true of uh, everything from corporations to advocacy groups to regular people. Uh, but uh, giving it to the electors here is essentially saying, I will give you a prize now for your consideration to do this, uh, to help us win this. And then we have a working relationship afterwards. We have already made one successful deal. Mm -hmm. There will be more where that comes from. Mm -hmm. If I'm I, king, I, you know, I will, uh, uh, like for real, I will fund the construction of two new keeps on your property. If you vote for my candidate. Well, and, and this happens all the time in internal party elections. Uh, if you want to become the like chairman of a state party, you show up with a big donation and a fundraiser and say, and when I'm chair, you're going to get even more, right? Like it's a, uh, here's a gift. And by the way, you want to see more gifts. Give me a little bit of power, right? Yeah. Like that's exactly how you would do that. And this is the kind of the exact argument, right? You want, uh, you want to do well. Here's a gift now. And remember to vote for me. And those people are going to vote for you. Like I can see people saying, well, what if they just pocketed the money and then voted against him? Sure. But if you one person gives you promises. Yeah, exactly. And if Carlos one person Valerian is promising is you dumb. more where that came from, right. you're going to say, well, they were good the first time. Right. I'm going to flip you a grand now and the promise of, uh, of a shipping deal later. That's how you do it. Yeah, and uh, and Corliss is the guy who can offer shipping deals. He can offer rare treasures. 
he can offer all that. And then when Lenor is king, Corliss can say, here's all the promises we made. Fulfill them. This person wants, you know, docking rights here and they want a new bridge constructed there. Use the power of the office to get in there and do it. Like if you're talking about that as a uh, a way that you're allowed to get votes here, Corliss, by all accounts, should be able to win the election just out of his own pocketbook and promises. Yeah, and and that's why this is this is that's another reason this is so weird to me. Is Corliss, Rainis, and Lenor are are charismatic and charming and fucking loaded. Yeah. Uh, uh, and none of these people, with the possible exception of the Manderleys, we can talk about that. None of these people on this on their side are are viable. You know, none of these people are yeah. purchasable. Uh, the, they, yeah, the Baratheons were baked in. The Valerians were baked in. Uh, the the Starks made their decision on the way to the council, and we're never going to change it. Yeah. So, so where where did all this money? go that it was wasted yeah did he bribe one person it was really open-handed with one person who didn't end up uh, yeah. taking the deal yeah Ma like, Ma mansa musa was was uh open-handed and still lost how does that work i it's it's insane like the like uh uh you're telling me that a rockefeller can't win an election with a thousand people in it you're telling me yeah a rockefeller can't win an election uh they, they also had a good chance of winning anyways because they had residual support in people actively campaigning for them. Like, uh, I think you've said this before, Tom. There's a percentage you get just from showing up and having a pulse. Yes. Yep. And if you actively do things to campaign, you bump that number up. And I know the number just from actively campaigning, uh, depending on what you're doing, like I know door-to-door -door is like, up to five percent bump in your direction uh like mail is like two or three street signs is one like and, obviously yeah, they're not running a door-to-door -to -door campaign cash but, is a lot no yeah, they are yeah. right they are they have to be they're going 10 to 10 they, well the, the, yeah, that's what i'm saying it's not it's not like they're voting to like the common people uh of westeros door-to-door -door, but they are literally going tent to tent and saying where's your head at what's the deal you would think just baked in on doing that, you'd be in like a blowout would be low double digits. Like let me, let, blowout let would me, be 24, 30% maybe. Let me bring this around from the other perspective. Can you imagine? We know Viserys Targaryen. Can you imagine yeah. Viserys Targaryen openly campaigning? No, it seems like Damon did most of the work for him. He's kind of a dumbass. I love yeah. him. He's 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 a he's an excellent peacetime leader. And and a uh, uh, a decent governmental mind, uh, but he's, he's a he's, shit candidate. He is. He's he's a bad candidate. I, like people, it, people who are voting for him were voting for a status quo understanding of inheritance. And I and I, like if the um, like vote was like entitled, do you want to let Lane or inherit and therefore establish? that these sons of your daughters can inherit. Think about how this will affect you. I could see that <laughs> having a huge impact, no, but I don't, I still don't think that's 96, four. And also they never said, they never said we're going to set precedent here. That came later. Like no, no. what, what, what you're describing is what the billboard said. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The, <laughs> if somebody is campaigning, that's the, are you sure you want to set that precedent? somebody going tent to tent and saying that I could see happening. I could see that swing the election. The, uh, uh, sure. You're okay with this person's son of a daughter inheriting. Do you want that happening to your castle? Uh, that might win you the election by 60, 40. Cor Corlys Valerion wants to give your son's castles to your distant nieces. Are you going to let that happen? Yeah. So, so I, th I think that that would be the Hightower argument. Because can we talk about Otto Hightower now? Yes, yes, yes. yes. But, it's overdue, uh, actually. To, to get into this, I, a wonderful image popped into my head of Otto Hightower and Damon Targaryen like going door to door together. <laughs> well, but, so, uh, uh, Otto's got the clipboard. <laughs> But so this is where I'm thinking that they did not act in concert 
it was one of those uh, because Damon wouldn't be arguing against uh, female succession necessarily, um, but Otto would be. So I think I think the veil was swayed by Damon uh, with "I'm married to your daughter and I'm going to kill you" and stuff, and then the reach was swayed by the high towers. And so again, geographically, that makes sense. As far as family ties, that makes sense. Um, uh, 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 would one of you guys read me? Oh, maybe I can just copy paste it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Amir, thank you so much for, for getting us yeah. these, these numbers, by the way. Uh, uh, please then, continue while I'm typing this out. I'm, oh, I'm um, going to pull up another tab and do the math right now. I still don't think that gets us there. These numbers aren't exact uh, because they do include some houses that uh, were like created later. Like the uh, Longwaters is included in the Crown Lands, and um, but like these were uh, the overall numbers. And I think in terms of ratio, it should uh, these should be pretty accurate. Yeah, it's if it's off by a percent or two, that that's. That that doesn't matter unless we're counting votes, uh, which we are not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, North fifty nine. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, so uh, please continue. I'm so sorry. Talk. Tell me. Tell me about Otto Hightower. Um. Yeah. So he was a uh, he was already hand of the king at this point, uh, because Balon was hand. Because Balon died. Right. Yeah. Oh my god. Otto Otto handed the king and Vagon Archmaester, both in Old Town, both uh, perhaps anti-magic. Uh oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, and 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 like I very much subscribe to Preston Jacobs uh, uh Dragon X gene theory and that the Maesters would have also done the math on this. The Maesters would have had a rudimentary understanding of you know, Punnett squares. So the maesters and uh, would have had a vested interest in keeping inheritance away from Targaryen women, not because they really care about a uh, male dominated primogeniture, but because they don't want dragon hatchers to be in power. Uh, Raina, Rhaenys, Rhaenyra. They would rather be Viserys who has already taken, uh, who has already had his dragon die. Right. Yeah. So the Preston's theory for people who may not know, uh, is that males can inherit a dragon rider gene from their mother, but, uh, in order to be a, a quote dragon hatcher, you have to have two X's and they both have to have a dragon marker on them. So only female Targaryens, can hatch new dragons. Um, and he does the math on this, it all tracks, um, as far as when we see new clutches of dragons pop up and they are around Reyna and Rhaenyra. Rhaenyra was a prolific dragon hatcher. Um, uh, whereas like Alysanne was a dragon rider, but not a dragon hatcher, but like her, her daughters could presumably be dragon hatchers. So uh, that's part of the basis of the theory that like the maesters want to manipulate uh, Targaryen succession uh, because they want to limit the power of the literal dragons. So we haven't, to, to bounce off that momentarily, we haven't really talked about, about the maesters and we, we all, we, we love the grand maester conspiracy around here. Um, the, oh, the, sorry. Um, I, okay. I'm not necessarily saying I buy into the grand maester conspiracy. I'm saying I buy into the high tower conspiracy. Uh, and that the high towers, given that they rule Old Town, have some maesters on side. Um, uh, 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 and somebody tell me if I'm being overly simplistic about this. The, there is a popular theory that the maesters are the, the maesters and or Old Town and or uh, 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 that area of like learned individuals in Westeros generally uh, are working to overthrow the Targaryens and limit the existence of dragons in the world and 
so helped, among other things, to manufacture the Dance of the Dragons. Uh, and we haven't talked about that much so far today, but I think it's for sure relevant, right? Like, if this is a terrible result uh, uh, for the future of, of House Targaryen and the future of the realm generally, because... I'm not going to say that this... I think that, that the maesters who write Fire and Blood are uh, uh, extremely overdramatic when they say that at this point, war was guaranteed. Um, but I, I... Like, this sure didn't help. Yeah. Tom, I did some math, by the way. Okay. Assuming that uh, Vizzy T got uh, all of the, like votes of the lesser lords and assuming that Lenor got all the votes of the lesser lords for the lord promise that voted for him and then pulling away the ones that we know crossed from like pulling the blackwoods and the uh crownlands over i'm assuming that if somebody explicitly is not on the record for voting for Lenor, they voted for viserys as well okay that comes out to 311 to 105, assuming perfect turnout. Holy assuming that everybody shit. who could have voted by proxy or otherwise showed up and voted. That's assuming no defections other than the ones we know, and that Vizzy T had a lock on everywhere that wasn't the North, the Stormlands, and the three houses of the Crownlands that we know Lenor won. The Celtigars, the uh, Valerians, and the Bar Emmons. Uh, there's a possibility that, like, you can get to wacky numbers if none of those northern lords voted or the Stormlands voted or their proxy votes were flipped. Yo, but, you like, know what we haven't talked about at all today, Zach? Mm -hmm. Like, you're assuming that they got every single lord, right? They, they, yeah. they, the Viserys and Damon and Otto. Six and and the Lannisters uh, uh, successfully brought every single lord that they that they could. Yeah, we have not talked about the Iron Islands. Yeah, you're telling me that Dagon Greyjoy's <laughs> dad? You can't you can't give him some cash and be like, hey, dude, I'll leave you guys alone when I am uh, a master of ships. Come on down. Yeah. You guys, you guys can uh, pillage all you want as long as it's not here. You go out to the Summer Islands, I'm going to turn a blind eye. You go to the Stepstones, you're in good shape. Like, yeah, that's exactly what they want to hear. How does this? How does this happen? Right? Like, assuming that there's not drastic changes in these numbers, we're also like turnout could be a factor, but it should be a factor that, uh, by all accounts, like makes it closer if like yeah. some of the Vale Lords who are closer to the border came in, if some of the uh, Northern Lords made it in on the same trip, if the Starks could make it, anybody south of them could make it too. He could pick them up on the way. It doesn't, so, there's uh, no way to get this number without some amount of fraud. Yeah. This is guaranteed fraudulent number. Um, the, the Lord Greyjoy was not in attendance, uh, but you know who was? Cool. Uh, Lord Farwind from the Lonely Light is the only named Ironborn Lord in attendance. There were others from the Iron, La uh, Iron Islands. So, so what I'm thinking... But, but somebody made it from Lonely Light. Why? 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 That's crazy. Why? That, that, why? that person has every excuse to vote by proxy. Zach, I have a question. Yes. What what is the number if we give Viserys all everyone from the north yeah what is this what is the number if we give Viserys everyone from the north? If we if we give this I I already did the math. If we give Viserys everybody who is not explicitly there on the record voting for him, he only has uh 7 votes, which would be 7 to, and then if you flip the other ones, it becomes what uh that is 98 added to uh, 311. That is 409 to 7, which is the blowout. 
But you have to assume that none of those northern lords showed up. And the guy from Lonely Light showed up. Like, you, you can't have that you, number You can't there. pay off the guy from Lonely Light? <laughs> yeah. Like, you, you have to assume that nobody started and talked to realize that that number is not possible. Like, like people are nobody gonna, questions have, this at the time either. Yeah, nobody well, questions and, it. And the at least, part. well, I should note it is not explicitly recorded that that anyone questions this at the time. I have this is one of the final um, uh, notes on this uh, quote: "The count was so overwhelming that even Lenor's father and mother knew they could not hope to prevail." That does not square with me for the person we know Corliss Valerion to be. Well, that's the argument of like, it was shown to be overwhelming to prevent it from becoming a violent scuffle sort of thing. Like, I think if, that's you a good have, argument. if you lost hard and you don't know whether you lost hard legitimately or if there's any amount of fraud, you also don't know you could use this as a barometer for how much of the kingdom is willing to back your claim if you do it by the sword, knowing you'll lose some of them because you put it to a council instead. But if you lose 55-45, say, hey, I've got dragons and a navy and a bunch of money. We're winning this the other way. That's the uh, that's the argument I can see for like the maesters changing the numbers is, yeah, good luck. You don't have enough dragons to beat this margin. But even then, like, uh, there's it's st that's still not a super satisfying answer to me. There's still other fishy things about this than to just throw up my hands and say the maesters like bumped up the margin uh, to make sure there wasn't a war is an answer. But there's so th this is such a mess of an election. All right, all right, Zach. I want to, uh, Mira. Do you have any 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 points you want to make right now? Um, no, I was just thinking, well, so it says more than a thousand lords attended, but it doesn't say more than a thousand lords voted. And we know that there were, uh, non-voting Dornishmen there. Um, yeah. And, and I would imagine that, that like, like, like we know that there, that when we say lords, that, uh, that, that, oh, oh, does it say more than a thousand lords and their families? Cause I was going to say, does that include like. Like, like if, if Lord Blackwood and his two kids come, does that count as three lords by their count, but only one vote? Yeah. It would probably be one vote, but so Dorne wasn't part of the Seven Kingdoms. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the heir apparent to the Prince of Dorne was in attendance as a spectator. So any other Dornish lords, like if Lord Ironwood showed up or, or Lord Dane, none of them would be voting. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we, we know that, that the, the, uh, heir apparent was there along with others. So, you know, we don't know if they were among the thousand mentioned. I don't know if that messes with the numbers at all. No, Zach, Zach, what's our voting population here? Uh, well, total. Assume, that, assume, that's, assume that's, the inter total. that's the interesting thing. If you say a thousand lords showed up. Yeah. Yeah, we, we don't have them. Yeah. We have yeah, that's what it is. Four hundred and sixteen lords. We found it. We counts. found it. They stuffed the fucking ballot box. Well, and that's well, no, that that gives a question of who can vote because these lesser houses, there's other houses underneath them. Like, uh, there's this makes me think that if there is a great council, in a time, uh, a little earlier in the Duncan Agnavel is actually. Sir Eustace might still be alive to vote in the next one we're going to talk about. Does he have a vote? Is is he someone who's uh, allowed to do so? Because then the numbers get wacky, and if you allow proxies, oh yeah. Well, but you I wouldn't you wouldn't start, necessarily you know uh, you wouldn't necessarily need proxies if if you if if all of the houses like uh, uh, Dustin are accounted for, and then you just. You, you give an acre of land to just a fuck ton of people in the Westerlands. Like maybe this is how like Eustace got landed. Oh my God. That's ingenious. Make new Lords. Land is cheap. A Lordship and, and, uh, is, Littlefinger says that to, to, uh, to Ned. 
a title and, is and cheap. People in like the Reach have a lot of land to give. They can just give you like uh, an orchard. The Reach, the Western meal, lands, and the Riverlands. Tap a sword on both your shoulders and say, "Congrats, you're a landed knight." Mm-hmm. When did the Baelish family come over? Uh, it later can, than that. It had to have been. Sure. It, it had to have been like like two. Yeah. Or yeah. Later. Or early enough. It prob- probably close enough for um. Oh, bye, Zach. Uh, uh, my, my camera is trying to be laggy. Uh, probably close this. enough for voting in the Great Council of 233, though. Very possible. Because yes. it was his great grandfather who came over from from uh, uh, Essos, right? Yep, from Bravos. Something to the tune of 80 years ago. Dude, I think you are absolutely correct. Can we find that quote? I'm going to try to find that quote from Peter Baelish. So uh, that's when he's um, explaining about the assassin and why they didn't hire the faceless man. He said, I did more to protect Daenerys by offering a lordship to whoever kills her. Um, A lordship is cheap and a faceless man is expensive. A lordship is cheap and a faceless man is expensive. Faceless men are expensive. I just love them. We're cutie. Um... Yeah, the house began with Peter's great grandfather, uh, who was born in Bravos, came to the Vale as a sellsword, employed by House Corbray. The lordship is cheap, dude. I think you fucking got it. Yeah, I think that 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 is, is that, a, not only is that like sensible, it's also very satisfying. Louis Simos, we did it. <laughs> I like that explanation the best out of yeah, all. Yeah, me of them. too. And and of course it can like it can be a uh, a combination of factors, but I I think we, I think we cracked it. I think that's it. I think that's it. That's, well, and um <laughs> right, you you have Tywin, an old, Tywin like, Land. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, to talk about an old like uh hold on, I'll turn my camera back on and see if it's working any better. Uh an old method of uh um uh what was oh, I going to say? Uh election like method was to literally like you know when parties controlled registration just like day before election to surprise people register a bunch of people uh in uh this is something that corrupt like systems back when there were less protections did this uh in like the 1800s it's thought that edgar Allan poe may have died because they did a thing where they dressed him up as different voters for different polling places and they were like getting him liquored up the whole time, uh, which was apparently a common tactic in Baltimore back in the day. Uh, if you just show up with a bunch of people dressed up as knights saying, yeah, these are, uh, I just landed them. And uh, well, you don't need to say I just landed them yesterday, but no, yeah. these are all landed knights. Yeah. Why do you Who's feel... gonna dispute that? Yeah, absolutely. Why would I tell you when I landed them? The only people who have those records are the maesters, and they are more than happy to backdate it 10 years. Yeah, exactly. I, I showed up with uh, 42 lords. Uh, yesterday, there were uh, three lords and 39 peasants. Now the, now there's 42 lords, the, the members of this voting body. Dude, that's really good. That's I, I really like good. <laughs> Holy Thank shit. you. I'll be I'll more, be here all day. More, it was in front of us the entire time. More than a thousand lords showed up. There's not a thousand lords in the Seven Kingdoms <laughs> until they're needed to be. <sighs> and then you you only need what the hand of the king, uh, you know, who is a high tower and has a lot of pull in the reach, and who we know. At least his show implies has a close relationship with Casterly Rock. You only need those two in on the conspiracy. Yeah. Yep. Yep. But you I think need the, that, you need the person the with the time. land and the person who signs the documents. And Otto Hightower is uh-huh. is the hand of the king. Hello, hello, can... your hello, your grace. I have this stack of uh. 410 documents that I need you to sign, please. 
And and he'll do it, no question asked, because this is already part of the plan. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Fuck to Harris. I'm not a fan. Damn. It's right. really good. I think we can call it here. I think that's yeah. Yay. Yeah. Uh, I would like to revisit this in the king's moot because I have uh, 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 taking this as precedent. I have a Theon. I have a new Theon latecomer theory. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. I like that. Yeah. Uh, thank you, everybody. I, I really appreciate you stopping by. If you guys like this kind of thing, we're gonna do it again. It's Multiple a times. We got we got a yeah, bunch like, of elections to get through. And it's gonna get weirder and more exciting and better every time. The, yeah, oh, like yeah. this was to me, this was like the boring election. Yes. This and, is the one yeah. that's full of procedure and not all that much intrigue. We have and, and, procedure. And we, know, and we knew the conclusion going in that some sort of fraud was committed. I know I can try and persuade you on all the other ones that they might have been legit. Nah. I'm going to convince you. Jon Snow won fair and square. The, the, asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. The only thing, the only fair election in the whole of the Seven Kingdoms is the King's Moot. Look, if you show up with a, it's a look. It, if you wanted to win, you should have shown up with a magic horn. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, <Better everybody>. bribes. <laughs> Night, night. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye.